it ended next episode i also feel like i should mention this i'm not gonna tell too much about it but i'm working on something special for you guys okay i swear <laughs> this has been taking a lot of my time but it'll all be worth it i do have to keep it quiet for now because i'm so excited about it but i promise you something's coming if this ends up in the video then good but I might cut it out, but maybe I won't. We'll see. But anyway, I've been working on something special for a really long time. I'm still not done with it, so I'm going to keep it hush, but something's coming, okay? I swear. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest, I didn't even realize time flew by that much. It feels like I posted a YouTube video literally a week ago. I don't notice the days passing. <laughs> I was just getting messages from you guys saying, Hey, where are you? Are you okay? You haven't posted in a while. We miss you, things like that. And I was here just like, have I been gone for that long? But then I realized, yes, I've been very inactive. So here I am, that's all. I just literally have been moving. That's it. And I've also been working on my secret project that's literally taking forever to finish. How do people do hand tricks with a pen? Soul pen. So I'm currently in the middle of trying to figure out what I want to do with my room. And I'm also working on some things. I am currently taking a break from my secret little project that no one cares about. <laughs> So I can actually finally focus on my life a little bit because to be honest, I think this secret project is kind of killing me. Anyway, let's get kind of productive. <laughs> wow, it's finally happening. <laughs> okay, I can do this. Okay, so <laughs> where do I begin? So I have had a secret for... I actually found out recently that it's been 10 months that I've kept this a secret. I thought it was 9 months, but it was actually 10. So it's been a long time coming. But I can finally tell you what I've been working on for this last year. I've never done anything like this. I still am figuring out how to do this, but it's been fun. It's been a great learning experience and I have had fun and not so fun times, but mostly fun. <laughs> So I think in this video I already showed you that I've been holding on to the secret for quite a while. In some of my past videos I've been hinting that I've been working on something and I barely ever really talked about it. So some people might be surprised. Maybe you might have never heard me say that I've been working on something. That's okay too. Then this will be a complete surprise to you. <laughs> but around February I think I first mentioned that I was working on something. I actually started working on this thing since October of 2020. I had the concept for this for years but I didn't get around to actually finding a way to do it until 2020 and since then I've been working on it. This was literally the hardest secret I ever had to keep. Oh wow I'm really about to say it but anyway. <laughs> so for the last 10 months, almost a year, I have been working on... A webtoon! Yay! <laughs> oh god. <laughs> it feels weird coming out of my mouth. It's always been like a concept, an idea in my head, and finally saying it out loud just feels weird. But yes, I do have a webtoon. Ah! I worked on this completely by myself. This is not a collaboration or anything. This is simply just a project that I wanted to do for no reason. <laughs> Actually, there are reasons, but no one told me to make this. I just did it myself. <laughs> so I guess for now I should talk about the actual webtoon itself. So my webtoon is titled To Love and Be Loved. Very romance, very drama-like. I just thought it was catchy and simple to the point. Literally about the concept of loving and 
being loved. This is a romance slash drama slash not really slice of life, but just like it's very kind of realistic. It's not fantasy or anything, but it is mostly a romance, which is very, it's been very interesting to write and explore. And then my name on Webtoon is Somi Yu. So I'm not going by Ono oh Nina or Nina Yu. I decided to choose a sort of pen name for my Webtoon. If you don't know what it means, it's basically my Korean name in the order of just a standard Western English name. So my Korean name is actually Yu Somi, but for my pen name's sake, I did Somi Yu. Very simple. There's no other meaning other than that. <laughs> I did consider Yu Somi, but then it would be too much like my name. I kind of also wanted it to be like its own identity kind of thing. And then I also now have an Instagram, an art account sort of thing. It's called Somi Yu Draws. I'm gonna post more art related stuff on that account. I still have Nina Yu, which is my personal Instagram account. That's kind of where Owen oh Nina or me lives. <laughs> but then I do have a designated art account. Yay. Now, for those of you who may not know what a webtoon is, it is basically a comic that you can read on your phone on a desktop and you basically just scroll through the comic. It has origins in South Korea and it's pretty fun and popular. A lot of people read webtoons, so if you don't read them, that's fine. But maybe this is a good opportunity to start. There are so many webtoons out there and now mine's there. So currently there are three episodes out. I definitely wanted to make sure that there were a few episodes episodes for you guys to read and then the next episode is going up the next week after that and then I will just hopefully <laughs> be updating weekly. I don't know how realistic that is because I am doing YouTube at the same time. That's an airplane. As you know, webtoons take or comics in general take weeks months, years to finish and that's kind of what I planned with mine as well. I didn't make like 20-40 episodes, although I wish I did, but it's hard making a comic. It's hard to make art in general, so that's why it did take a long time for me to get this done. So that is the gist of my project. Yay! I finally said it. Oh my god. Now I guess I will take the time to explain why I worked on this project and why I'm doing this and how I started doing this. So I have had an on and off relationship with art, but in the beginning of my channel, like years ago, I would make content about sketchbook tours, art related things, not really a lot, but I would show some art related things back then. And then once I got into college, I kind of just forgot about art for a little bit because I became very busy. My college major was very intense on reading. I didn't have real plans for what I would do with art. I kind of just did it for fun, especially because I started drawing around kindergarten and I loved it since then, but I never saw it as a thing that I would incorporate into my professional life. I always saw it as a hobby and as time passed, it started to become less of a hobby and more of just like this thing I used to do. And so for a long period of time, I just didn't draw that much. <laughs> my voice just kind of gave out for a second, what the heck? But on my channel, I had the opportunity to get back into painting because alongside drawing, I also liked painting. I took three years of art in high school and and then I took a drawing class in college, in community college, before I transferred to UC Berkeley. For a period of time, I actually thought about applying for the art major at UC Berkeley. I really thought I was going to. I even considered art history, but eventually I did end up choosing media studies because it focused on stuff that I liked. It focused on TV, movies, literal media, visual communications, things like that. And so instead of doing art related stuff, I focused on media, which I still love, especially because I am on YouTube and social media takes up a majority of my life. So I don't have any regrets about studying media studies. It basically shaped me into the person I am today, but I did kind of stray away from drawing and from art and this hobby that I loved since I was a kid. So that's kind of how I spent a lot of my young adult life. In college, I was just reading so much. I was focusing on studying exams and I had very little time to make art or, you know, dabble in this hobby that I love. But through YouTube, I was able to kind of go back to it. I would paint for YouTube videos, but painting is not my strongest medium. I actually just love drawing with a pencil 
pencil or a pen, especially a pen. And so around 2020, I kind of got into digital art, which I never thought I would get into because I've always been more of a fine arts, traditional art kind of person. I was like, I'm never going to figure out Photoshop or Clip Studio Paint, Procreate. I'm never going to figure that out. I would say that I'm pretty analog and it's kind of hard for me to adapt to new technology, but somehow I am actually decent at it. It took me months to finally figure out Clip Studio Paint, which is, by the way, the program that I use to make my webtoon. I had to figure that out for the last few months while I was trying to finish this webtoon. I was also learning, so that was challenging, but it was also very fulfilling. But anyway, for the last year, basically, I was just trying to focus on what mattered to me. And as a media studies major, as someone that loves media and the power that it has to bring people together, to share stories, to create some kind of impact, long lasting impact thereof. I was trying to figure out a way to basically do something that I really cared about alongside YouTube, which was also something I really cared about. So around the end of 2020, I found out that people can make webtoons. I first found out about webtoons in 2017 when I actually entered or transferred to UC Berkeley. In one of my classes, there was this person sitting next to me and on his phone, he was scrolling through something. I, I just happened to peek because his phone was literally like right here. I couldn't not peek. So I, I just peeked for a second and then he was scrolling through something and I was like, wait, is that a webtoon? Because I've seen it before. And sure enough it was. And so I was like, huh, maybe I'll start reading them too. And that actually inspired a scene in my webtoon. So I didn't get to talk to the person at all, but I did gain an interest in webtoons through that moment. So I downloaded it for myself. I would read some webtoons. So I knew about it since 2017, but it wasn't until 2020 that I found out that literally anyone can make one. For some reason, I always thought there was like a huge, what's the term, like a huge barrier. I always thought you needed like some sort of connection, some sort of publisher, like a team of artists and writers, things like that. I always thought it was something that you couldn't do on your own. Like I didn't think of it as YouTube, where for instance, me, I just uploaded a video, did that myself, blah, blah, blah. But then I found out about Webtoons Canvas, and that's basically a platform where anyone can make their own webtoon, webcomic. So I was very excited. I was like, anyone can make one? So from then on, after late 2020, I figured out what programs people use. I worked on the story. I have had this story probably since 2017. I had a vague idea of it, but then I started fine tuning it around 2020, obviously, because I found out about my design to make a webtoon. So much goes into making a comic, so much. I have learned so much through this process. It is hard. And there were actually a lot of times where I wanted to give up which is also why it took so long. <laughs> it took months to write the story because a strong story or a stronger story is one where you kind of know the beginning to the end. So you can kind of plan things out when you would hint at things that happen in the future, characters you have, all that. So I had to sort of have an idea of the beginning and end. I have an ending already. <laughs> so I had to come up with the entire story. But another reason why it took so long for me to finally get this out was almost every other day at the same time that I was working on this project that I was spending all these hours on this project almost every other day I just thought of stopping which is also why I kept this such a secret because I didn't know if I would actually pull through I didn't know if I would actually commit to this and release this eventually. Even though I had worked months on this, there was always some sort of doubt because this was something that I've never done before. I didn't have anyone to go to for advice or anything, except for like YouTube videos I would watch for research. It was honestly hard to commit to this and believe that I was going to finally do it. But I spent so much time on it that I was like, at this point, you're gonna do it. <laughs> you have to do it. So even though it was hard and even though I had a lot of hesitation, I just knew that this was something that I cared about, that I wanted to do, that I just thought every single day about and worked almost every single day on that I was just going to do it. Anyway, it's done. <laughs> it's out there or it's going to be out there and there's no going back. This is something that I wanted to do and I did it. I just also knew that if I was so nervous about this, then that means that I was doing something worthwhile, I guess. I haven't felt this much 
literal anxiety, but also at the same time thrill over something in a very long time. It was just a nice feeling to finally just feel proud of something that I was doing. So hopefully people like it. <laughs> literally my days would be just 10 plus hours of me either drawing or writing or doing research because you know a lot of research goes into writing a story as well but i have always been someone that loves storytelling i love books or i loved books now i don't have the time to read any books but i loved books i love tv shows i love movies i almost became a film major but media studies was just a little more kind of my style but i was always fascinated by the power of storytelling and i just for the longest time didn't know how i could do it myself i didn't know what was going to be the best medium for me to tell the story and when i found out about webtoon i was like this is perfect <laughs> it combines my love of storytelling my childhood love of art, of drawing, and it also combines social media technology. It just literally combined everything that I loved and that's why I was so, I guess, passionate about it. It's weird to say I'm passionate about something. But literally every day I thought about this project and I would work on it. So I was like, I can't give up on it. Even though every day I did consider giving up, but there was a part of me that knew I wouldn't give up, but sometimes I was a little bit pessimistic. Anywho, that is the origins of this project and that is what I've been working on. And I don't know if you were able to notice, but the last year, the last few months, I would take some time off of social media. I would kind of be inactive on YouTube. It would take me weeks to upload a video. And that was simply because I was working on this webtoon. It was kind of hard to make content on YouTube and also work on the webtoon because I had to separate them. Since my webtoon was a secret, I couldn't, I couldn't show it at all in my videos. Most of my life was just me sitting at my desk. Literally, here I can actually show you what I've, how I work on it. Ta-da! It's just my iPad. And then and I've got my Apple Pen. You probably have seen me work on my iPad. Yes, indeed. That was me working on my webtoon. I would blur it out in my videos. Now you know. But because I couldn't show myself working on this because I didn't want any hint or any sign of me working on digital art, it was hard to make YouTube content and work on the webtoon. And so that's why I would just take weeks off of YouTube, even though I didn't want to do that. But at the same time, I wanted to finish this project as soon as possible. A lot has happened this year. I moved around April. I was very busy in my personal life and then I was working on this It was just hard separating it and I didn't want to separate it But I also didn't want to show too much of what I was up to just in case I gave up on it I didn't want to disappoint hundreds of people thousands of people here is art neen I am so excited to kind of get back into art neen It's been a long time coming, but hopefully I will have much more content and I can show you more of myself without holding back I guess now I should talk about what the actual webtoon is about. So let's get into that. I have the about written on my phone and this is actually on webtoon and I'll just read it for you. A story of two individuals who have always felt better off alone. Hardworking, friendly, but harboring a side she doesn't like to show, Jian Kang aspires to be a director. Shy, reserved, but full of love and passion, Chan Young Kwan aspires to be a screenwriter. The two college students cross paths and together they learn what it means to love and be loved as they navigate their lives trying to make it in the entertainment industry. So it is essentially about two college students. They are... How do I talk about this without giving too many spoilers? I don't want to give spoilers for my own story. How do I How do I do that? So essentially, these are two college students. Yes, it takes place in college, right in time for back to school season. It is about two introverts, different kinds of introverts. There are many kinds of introverts, but they are two kinds. They meet each other and through each other, they basically find out what it means to love and be loved. That is all I can say without spoiling too much. Should I talk about the characters? For now, I will talk, I guess, about the two main characters, but there are a lot of main characters coming. So basically, we have Jihan Kang or Kang Jian. She is studying film with a concentration in directing and she is an introvert, but she also is sort of trying to grow out of her comfort zone, out of her shell. She's pretty sociable, approachable, friendly, and she's very hardworking. She kind of wants to get what she wants. She wants to achieve what she wants to achieve. And although she can get along with people, she also kind of is used to being on her own. She prefers to be on her own and she can kind of tend to shut the world out. You'll learn more about her later. And then we have Chan Yang Kwan or Kwan Chan Yang. He's also studying film. He aspires 
aspires to be a screenwriter and he is the more shy introvert. He's also pretty reserved. He doesn't really feel the need to kind of let people know who he is, but he's also pretty hardworking. He has a great imagination and he is trying his best to overcome childhood fears, insecurities, same thing for Jian. And basically together, they help each other grow, things like that. I don't, I, I'm gonna stop talking. That's that for now. There are going to be a lot more characters coming as the story progresses and a lot more things happen. So stay tuned for that. <laughs> I also want to mention that this is completely fictional. I don't know anyone, hopefully, by these names. <laughs> these characters are fictional. They're not based on people in my life. There might be some inspiration from my life experiences, experiences I've heard, but it is, for the most part, fictional. It's not an autobiography, and I don't intend for it to be an autobiography or a biography of any sort. These are just fictional characters with their own stories stories and hopefully I can touch on topics and things that I've always wanted to talk about but just didn't have the means to. So it's fictional! Fiction! Do not associate me with it! <laughs> Something that I worried about with making a webtoon is that I'm clearly not anonymous. My life is already on the internet so people know me I guess pretty well but I wanted to make these characters for people to relate to, to empathize with, maybe not understand. Basically just like any other story, just characters that you can kind of... what's the word? How do I explain this? All I basically want with the webtoon and the story and the characters is basically to bring you some sort of comfort. The whole reason why I even made YouTube videos was with the goal to make videos that comfort people, make them a little bit happier because that's what YouTube did for me and that's what I want to do with my webtoon as well. I just hope that it can be a source of comfort and that it can make you smile, make you laugh, maybe even make you cry. Just feel some kind of emotion. I hope that this is a story that you can relate to or just learn something from. I think I think I covered most of what I want to talk about. I can talk more about it in the future, maybe even show you the process of making a webtoon or just more digital art things, more traditional art things. But yeah, I hope you enjoy it. I literally worked for 10 months on this. <laughs> the story means a lot to me and I hope that it means something to you. I hope you can enjoy the characters, enjoy the story. So as you're watching this, the webtoon is out. It is on Neighbor Webtoon. I will have a link to it in the description in my Instagram bios. I have an art account that you can follow. It's Some You Draws. That's my account. I'm still gonna post regularly on YouTube, on my regular Instagram, on Twitter. Nothing has changed except for the fact that now I have this little project for you to enjoy as well. I hope that this basically shows more of me and is kind of like a new chapter. But that is that for this announcement video. This is my secret project. Thank you for your patience and for your continuing support. And I hope that this is a pleasant gift to you. I guess I will see you in my next video and I will also see you on Webtoon and my social media as usual. We're going to end it with a hug. Ignore my pajama pants. I hope you enjoy the Webtoon and my future videos and I will see you next time. Goodbye my friends.